The story of Vernon and Irene Castle is a film from 1939 that tells the true tale of a husband and wife who became famous dancers in the early 19th century. This movie takes you back to a time when dancing was all the rage and Vernon and Irene Castle were the stars everyone looked up to. Their story is not just about dance. It's filled with moments that will make you laugh, leave you in awe, and even bring a tear to your eye. As for personal stories, while I don't have personal experiences, many people find inspiration in Vernon and Irene's dedication to each other and their craft. It's a story that shows how passion can lead to success and how love can endure through tough times. Maybe you first saw this film as a child with your family, or perhaps it was a recent discovery that left you amazed by the elegance of the past. Now, we'd love to hear from you. What's your most memorable experience related to this movie? Your stories and memories are important to us, so please share them in the comments below. We're excited to read about how Vernon and Irene's journey has touched your life. In the 1939 film, The Story of Vernon and Irene Castle, Irene Castle served as a consultant, but her involvement was not without controversy. She expressed a desire for someone other than Ginger Rogers to portray her younger self, voicing concerns over various aspects of the production such as wardrobe and hairstyles. Despite Castle's objections, Rogers was well established as a fashion icon and a versatile actress, adept at transitioning between diverse roles with ease. Her popularity had even eclipsed that of her co-star Fred Astaire by the mid-1930s, and she was instrumental in carrying their films to success. Astaire, known for his exceptional dancing, may have shared Castle's sentiment for a different partner, albeit for contrasting reasons. Rogers' acting prowess had guided Astaire in front of the camera, and by the late 1930s, her solo career had flourished beyond their partnership. The film Carefree could have potentially benefited from casting a different lead opposite Rogers, suggesting that a pairing with an actor like Cary Grant or Jimmy Cagney might have elevated the movie's success. Astaire's career, while initially soaring face challenges, as indicated by his reaction to the comparative performance of Carefree and Vivacious Lady. In contrast, Rogers' career trajectory was on a stellar rise, with her solo projects outperforming any of their joint ventures. Her ability to carry a film was unmatched, necessitating a co-star of equal caliber, which ruled out many of Hollywood's talents at the time. Ultimately, Castle's criticisms did little to tarnish the reputations of those involved in the film, instead reflecting more on her own perspectives. Ginger Rogers emerged as the sole actress capable of fulfilling the demanding role opposite Astaire, cementing her status as a leading figure in Hollywood. Attention to detail was critical in the portrayal of period-specific fashion, as evidenced by Irene Castle's insistence on historical accuracy, even for something as seemingly minor as wearing a hat after a horseback ride. Despite her request, the director chose not to reshoot the scene. Ginger Rogers, who played Irene Castle, was later recognized for her contributions to entertainment and was inducted into the Hall of Famous Missourians. Frank Phelan, known for his role as a taxi driver in two classic films, brought his unique presence to the screen, contributing to the enduring appeal of the stories he helped bring to life. In the landscape of classic cinema, shifts in casting have often led to significant changes in film productions and the careers of the actors involved. For instance, Ginger Rogers stepped into a leading role for the Barclays of Broadway after Judy Garland's departure from MGM. This change marked a pivotal moment in Rogers' career trajectory. Meanwhile, Walter Brennan's success at the Oscars had an unexpected consequence, influencing the voting rights within the extras union. Additionally, the influence of film characters extended into other forms of media, as seen with Frank Phelan's portrayal of Ernie the Taxi Driver, which is believed to have inspired the naming of a beloved Muppet character on Sesame Street. These instances highlight the interconnected nature of the film industry and its cultural impact. In the world of early Hollywood dance films, the personal histories of the stars often intertwine with their on-screen performances. Fred Astaire, a prominent figure in dance, had a diverse family background with his father originating from Austria and his paternal grandparents from the Czech Republic who converted to Catholicism. His mother was a Nebraska native with German Lutheran roots. Marge Champion, another notable dancer, shared her life both on and off the stage with Gower Champion, with whom she had two sons, Greg and Blake. In a return to Broadway, Marge Champion graced the stage in a revival of Stephen Sondheim's Follies, playing a role that mirrored her real-life experience as part of a song and dance duo performing Rain on the Roof in January 2001. 
These personal details provide a glimpse into the lives of the individuals who contributed to the rich history of dance and cinema. In an era close enough to spark fond memories, Vernon and Irene Castle emerged as dazzling figures in the world of dance. Their journey, marked by grace and passion, captured the hearts of those who found joy in their movements. Etienne Drudot, whose life on stage began at 17, made his mark in the United States with his performance in Charlie's Aunt. Meanwhile, Walter Brennan, a man of traditional values, expressed his concerns over the influence of contemporary music on his grandchildren, highlighting the generational shift in cultural preferences. In the landscape of early Hollywood, Ginger Rogers stood out not just for her acting and dancing skills, but also for her unique family history. Her ancestor made a significant medical discovery. Frank Phelan, another notable actor, left his mark with roles in multiple acclaimed films, including two that won the Oscar for Best Picture. His career spanned various genres in decades, showcasing his adaptability. Meanwhile, Edna May Oliver's presence on screen was often likened to Frances Sternhagen, both sharing a similar look and a knack for wry humor, which made them distinctive in their comedic roles. Each actor brought their own story and talent to the screen, contributing to the rich tapestry of cinema history. In the late 1930s, Marge Champion, a dancer and actress, entered into marriage with Art Babbitt, a notable Disney animator known for creating the character Goofy. Their union, however, concluded in divorce after a brief period. During the early 1920s, Victor Varconi transitioned from stage to screen, showcasing his acting skills in German silent films such as Beyond Good and Evil and Night Visit at the Northern Bank. His career continued with roles in Lords of the Sea and the epic Sodom and Gomorrah, both released in 1922. Fred Astaire, a prominent figure in dance and film, was later featured in the publication American Classic Screen Interviews, highlighting his enduring influence in the entertainment industry. In the landscape of early Hollywood, Walter Brennan emerged as a significant figure by winning the first Oscar for Best Supporting Actor in 1936, setting a precedent for future awards. His achievement was not an isolated event, but part of a broader narrative that included actors like Frank Phelan, known for his family's acting lineage, with both his daughters, Carol and Kay, following in his footsteps. The roots of such talent can often be traced back to familial influences, as seen in Brennan's case, whose parents, William and Margaret Brennan, were Massachusetts natives who later moved to California. These connections highlight the interwoven nature of personal history and professional success in the film industry.